Hey everybody, uh, Scott Vince here, aka sometimes called the Redheaded Rebel, other times called other things that aren't appropriate for camera. But I wanted to do a quick video on why Midwest Modified slash B Mods need optional quick change gears. Here's the quick facts. However, uh, what I need you to do, if you agree with me on this post, um, I'm going to put two comments. One is that you agree. The other is you disagree. So if you agree, click the comment or like the comment that says agree. If you disagree, like the comment that disagrees. The other thing I need you to do is if you are a uh, Midwest Modified or BMOD driver across the country, in the comment section, if you think that we need quick change gears, tag your sanctioning body you race along with the tracks you race regularly so they know you want these gears. But here's the quick facts on why um, on so many counts um, BMOD drivers need optional quick change gears and why it's good for the driver, good for the sport. So, because when I conclude with this, I'm going to show you why it's cheaper, it's safer, saves you mega time, promotes traveling, and even helps out AMOD drivers. So, with that, let's talk about the money. Nine inch rear end, if you get a complete one, they're 1,000 to 1,200. The gears used on the used market, they're about 350 a set, which you never know what you're gonna get. And if you have to buy a pinion and uh, gears for it, it's gonna cost you 200 bucks to rebuild. New, they're about 600 bucks. Lightweight, new, they're about 750. So if you are a driver that races two tracks, you're gonna need obviously the rear end, which uh, obviously some of you who have cars already have it in your car, but um, the rear end is 1,000 to 1,200 bucks and two years gear sets, you're at 1,700 to 1,900. If you have to do new gear sets, uh, you're at 12 or 2,200 or 2,400. Your replacement housing, if you get a hit, a hit to the left rear or the right rear and you bend that, you're going to need to get an entire replacement housing or pull out some chains. Obviously, sometimes you can fix them with some welding and chains, but if you have to get a replacement housing, it's 400 bucks. Let's talk about the quick change. Quick change comes uh, in all of the A mods that are for sale. They generally have a quick change in them, which currently, if you're a B mod driver and you buy a used A mod, you're going to have to do something with that uh, use quick change and you're going to have to buy a brand new 9 inch to put in that car to convert it. Uh, meanwhile, the A mod driver who may went out and purchased a new car isn't going to want to put his used uh, quick change gear in the car, nor is the chassis builder going to want him to do that. They're going to want new car new stuff. But the price of a quick change gear setup is $1,500 to 1900 which again, you can search the internet on these prices. A lot of these just come from uh, Google. Um, and gears cost 70 bucks for a new set. So if you have a rear end and two sets of gears, you're at $640, $640 to $2,040. So comparable, they're pretty comparable in cost. Uh, however, uh, if you were to race all of the tracks in, in Wissota, for example, that have B mods, you'd need about 12 gear sets if you really travel that much, which on even on the used market, it's about 4,200 versus you could have 12 sets of quick change gears for, um, oh goodness, 12 sets of quick change gears, quick change gears, 70 times 12 equals $840. So anyway, so, the, the cost is about the same. Let's talk about if you damage your uh, quick change, it costs you about 100 bucks for a replacement uh, side tube versus uh, $400 for a new housing. Uh, the other thing is, is, let's just say you're a driver and you race two tracks. 
uh, a week. And so to change those gears, it's two hours of your time. Let's just say you race 20 times a year, which is about the average season of a track. So that's 40 hours. If your time is worth 20 bucks an hour, that means $800 a year of your labor and your time is going into it. Whereas, of course, for the quick change gears, it takes about five minutes. And so, this looks like a really good deal until you start adding in replacement costs, new gears, uh, as well as the fact that your time, if you race two tracks a year. Now, the reason I say optional is if you're a low, if you race one track a week, there's no reason for you not to run a, a nine inch uh, rear end. There's, they're out there, you can use gears, you get one gear set, great. Um, however, if you race one track, let's just say you race two tracks a year and then you go to your sanctioning body's big event of the year. Now you're at three, three sets of gear, which again here you can just pick up some $70 gears at the track if it was a new track and you didn't have gears for. Over here, um, you're going to spend anywhere from $350 to $600 to have those gears. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit of the cost. Hands down, the quick change in the long run is the cheaper option. So I'm going to raise all this here real quick and then I'm going to get to the other things that uh, also uh, play a factor. Bear with me. I've got my uh, notes here, which so we've already established that it's cheaper. Cheaper. Check. Um, time. Not only is it cheaper financially, uh, but the time you save, um, again, whatever your time is worth, um, if you, uh, you're talking, if you race two tracks, you're talking about 800, if you're worth $20 an hour or $30 an hour, obviously that, the time factor uh, increases, but if you race three tracks, you're increasing that by 33% or four tracks, you're, obviously it, it keeps going up. So um, anyway, so, um, but there's time savings and the most valuable thing there, the most valuable thing we have in our life is time. It's, you can't replace it. You can't make it. Um, it's all in how you time. So saves time, saves, check. Um, it promotes traveling. I'm not racing this weekend because I don't want to change gears in my Beamon. That's it. I don't want it because I'm going to have to, it's going to take me uh, out. I realize there's people that can change their gears in 15 minutes and yada, yada, yada. But if you're going at an average pace and you're one person, it's probably going to take you 45 minutes to an hour to change your gears. Um, and so again, save time. It's safer. We've all seen people at the track changing nine inch gears. And again, um, that, uh, Nobody likes to do that. So it's safer because obviously changing quick change gears is a five minute process. Um, it helps promote traveling, which of course, uh, travel lane, hopefully I spelled that right. Um, spelling is not my strong suit, but more traveling, more races, better races, et cetera, et cetera. It promotes traveling. If someone, wants to go racing, um, again, it's talking five minutes to change the gears instead of an hour. But really, when you go to a different track requiring different gears, it's not an hour you're committing to changing gears. It's two hours because you have to change them back for your home track. Um, let's talk about EMOD cars. When they sell them with the quick changes, uh, currently, um, you then have to buy a new 9-inch to go into it. Um, and then you have this used uh, quick change you have to do something with. So it makes it easier for an A mod driver to just sell their uh, roller to a B mod guy and leave the um, quick change uh, rear end in it uh, rather than having to pull it out, put a nine inch in, and then uh, having this uh, uh, nine inch to So Anyway, this is my attempt to make a pitch as to why uh, B mods, Midwest mods, uh, should have optional quick change gears. Now, 
What about the competitiveness of it? Because that's another uh, obstacle where they say, well, someone who has quick change gears uh, has an advantage, but I would say that the uh, more rotating weight offsets the advantage of being able to quickly uh, change your gears. The other option to overcome that is that um, the gears you start with uh, after, or for the heat race or the gears you have to leave in uh, all night would be another option. I don't know how to, I mean, people smarter than me can balance out the competitiveness of it. I'm just talking around all around value of why um, quick changes should be, optional quick change, get, rear end should be allowed in B mods, uh, AKA also known as Midwest mods, X mods, etc. cetera. Um, and again, in closing, if you, uh, I'm gonna put a comment on this post that if you uh, agree, uh, that says agree, if you agree, like it. Uh, also put a second comment on this post that says disagree, if you disagree, like it. And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, um, if you do agree, um, please uh, tag your sanctioning body along with the tracks you race regularly so they know how much this means to you as a racer. Uh, and until next time, smile.